Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Duan. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, my name is uh, Alessandro Zamparelli. I'm a computational designer. I have a background in uh, architecture and engineering. And uh, since 2023, I'm part of uh, AI Build. I work there as a senior geometry engineer, as part of a geometry team. So AI Build uh, is a London-based software company. We develop an integrated all-in-one uh, platform for manufacturing in different industries. And we have a particular focus on a large format uh, 3D printing. So while the background and the roots of the company are in architecture, we actually work with, whoa, with different industries. So we work with aerospace, automotive, construction, energy, marine, art and design, and many different industries. And as you can imagine, every industry has very different requirements, very different needs. And uh, the software that we provide basically works in a, a modular workflow that allows to perform the slicing of the object to produce the toolpath that you need at the end to print. And uh, is a, a hardware agnostic software, so it means that you can use it with different setups. You can have uh, from the desktop printer to big gun printers and the multi-axis robot. And uh, after generating the slicing, often time you have to also optimize the slicing. Different materials, different machines, they require many different uh, tuning of how to make a very nice toolpath for a machine. And then we allow to simulate and see what actually happened with the machine and to monitor the, pr the printing process while producing the part. So we also added uh, recently this feature for the thermal analysis. And uh, the problem is that with some material, for example, for example, with metal, you want to really keep an eye on what is the temperature while you print. So what we do is we do an analysis, a thermal analysis, and based on the feedback that we get, we tune and we adapt the slicing path in order to slow down or wait or change some parameters according to which setup we are using. So why else is everything that complicated? Can we just use a normal slicing? Well, yes and no, because what happens is that some clients, they really like to do very complex things that are complex on both a geometrical point of view, but also the material point of view. And uh, the workflow that we have to use, they often become very complicated. Uh, clients, customers we work with, we have very different uh, shapes that we want to produce. Sometimes it's very simple, but sometimes can get complicated. Uh, or maybe sometimes we have something that doesn't look that complex, but they want to print in a very specific way. They want the layers to be aligned according to certain features. They want to ensure that the quality at the end is optimal and up to their expectation or sometimes we have something extremely complicated and there you have to do a lot of fine tuning in order to find the optimal printing settings that gives you a super watertight object at the end. Or they work with uh, complex materials and technologies like DAD, metal printing, and we want to print from a central part toward the external part of the object because this is how you produce this type of object. Or yeah, other type of DAD printing. Or, for example, we use WAM. WAM is a different process, different parameters, different constraint. It's nice to follow all these different uh, cases, but every one of them have very peculiar challenges. Or, for instance, you can combine and have a hybrid workflow where you do a little bit of printing. So you take advantage of printing in reducing the waste of material. You just put the material where you need it. And then you have CNC milling that allows to smooth the surface and have the the finishing uh, uh, surface that you usually have with milling. So because of all the variety of different cases that we have to cover, we basically develop many different slicing uh, methods. So according to the user need, there is a specific slicing method, it works fine, you can use it, and uh, the software is kind of modular. Imagine like in Grasshopper having many components. Here you have different operators that you can use to create a workflow. And uh, you know, according to which type of challenge every customer has to, to deal with, we basically have already some workflow that show how you can achieve what you are trying to do. And uh, this looks fine from an engineeristic point of view, uh, but then from the design team, they say, yeah, but isn't it a bit complicated? Can we just simplify that? So we have this uh, end goal that we are looking to, which is the one-click slice which is a very difficult challenge. And uh, this is actually a problem that we are currently attacking from many different directions. 
and what I'm going to present and discuss here is uh, the geometrical point of view of how to deal with this ideal one-click slice. So let's imagine that we deal with a, a simple case. We have a bunny. No, it's not a bunny. It's, it, let's imagine it's in general a closed geometry. We want to print an object. We don't want internal infill. We want to save material because we are talking about large format printing. And uh, we want to just print the outer wall of this object. If you just use the regular horizontal slicing, what you usually see in 3D printing, you end up having uh, gaps in the overhang area. You have gaps at the top. You have the need of support, probably. And with large format, you don't want support because support means extra material, extra time, extra labor to remove the support. So you want to avoid them as much as possible. So what we came up with was this uh, geodesic slicing approach where basically is a slicing method that is more aware of the geometry of the object and try to guess what is the best orientation of the layers and it can work in non-planarly. Non so you see a regular slice, horizontal slicing and then what happened with a slicing method which is aware of which type of geometry you're dealing with. So as we mentioned here, we have uh, gaps at the top normally. You have uh, uh, yeah, overhangs that are not dealt properly. And with geodesic, you can cover entirely the surface, maintaining the uniform distance between every layer and ensuring that is watertight at the end. Also, we have some uh, parameters that allow us to tune the, the layer planarization and basically the same slicing method works out of the box perfectly with many different cases. And all these cases usually were addressed with different slicing method, different input. You decide how to want, you want to orient the layers, how do you want to print the object in order to achieve a better quality. And now we are able to achieve that just with a, uh, a single uh, slicing method. So how does it work? Well, it's not that complicated. So we normally have an horizontal slicing, meaning that we have a vertical gradient according to the Z coordinate, and our layers are just uh, lines that have the same uh, Z coordinate. While instead, if you use uh, geodesic fields, meaning that you compute the distance from the bottom of where you, whatever you are starting to print, and you reach the end of the object, then you can produce those curves based on the same distance value from the base. Um, so basically, what you want to achieve is, of course, to have uh, a closer distance between the layers, uh, especially a uh, uniform distance. But you also care, in this case, uh, about the tool orientation. We are not talking uh, just about a gantry printer that print from the top. We can use robot, we can use multiple axes, so we can orient the tool in order to achieve the optimal printing quality. So what you usually want is to have the tool that is oriented towards the previous layer. This gives you the best uh, interface between consecutive layers. So considering uh, both properties, what happens is that the overhang analysis that normally would look like what we have on the left, a lot of red, bad, uh, comes up with a lot of blue, good, on the right. So the process is uh, it's not that complex. Basically, you take a geometry, you analyze the mesh that you have. You have the triangles that allows you to uh, compute and calculate the distance along the geometry. You store the distance information on the vertices. You create a nice gradient that represents the geodesic field. And based on that, you just produce isocurves, contouring that generate basically the layers that you have to use. Uh, now, all these in theory work really well if you provide very nice meshes. The problem is usually the customer doesn't have a nice mesh. Sometimes it doesn't even know that there is a mesh at some point. It just provides a step file. And the match that you get from a step file usually is not really nice. So what happens is that you have some glitches, some errors, and you cannot ask the customer, OK, can you go back and make a nice mesh so it works nice? No, you have to deal with that personally. So uh, what happens is that uh, you have original triangles that produce all those glitches. We have to do a remeshing of a surface. The problem is, yes, you have uh, nice triangles that are uniform, but still, the ISO surfaces, they work on the uh, level of detail that is present in the mesh, meaning that if you have big triangles, you have glitches as well. 
So what you have to do, you have to increase the resolution of the mesh and have smaller triangles, but then you have many triangles. So what you have to do is instead to do an adaptive remeshing that automatically optimize the distribution of the triangles in order to achieve uh, good quality and good performances. At the end, the user just have to care about the, uh, what is basically his expectation in the computation time. If you just want a, a very quick computation, you can just use low resolution, or if you want a super high quality, then you can just increase that. So from a geometrical point of view, you say, okay, that's solved. Uh, we are fine, good. No, it's not that simple, because in London, we have also a facility with a robot and people that is using that to print, and we say, wait a minute, it's not that simple. So what about the collisions? Say, oh, uh, collisions, yes. Uh, so what happens is that when you deposit the layers, we say that the tool is oriented toward the previous layer. But sometimes you end up having collisions because basically in all the local tops, the tool is oriented tangentially to the surface. And then every time that you reach that, bam, collision. So how do we fix that? Well, why don't we orient the tool just perpendicularly to the surface so that in those areas we can print without one worrying about those collisions. So now we provide a, a set of parameters that allows to control what is the correction area. This of course change and uh, is affected by the type of hardware that you're using. So according to how big and bulky is your extruder, you may need a different uh, uh, correction. Then there is another problem, not only the tool orientation, but because of the dimension of the tool, because of how complex the layers can get, you may still have collisions. For that reason, we have also a way to planarize the layers. So it's just about smoothing the geodesic field. This will produce nicer and uh, prettier curves, but this has a small cost because these introduce variability in the layer height. This is not a problem in some processes, Usually polymers are quite forgiving, but when you use metal, this becomes a problem. So it depends really on the type of process you're using. Then we realized that uh, a lot of product that works well with this type of process are uh, air duct. And uh, because you have a cave uh, geometry, you have just the outer wall, and you can make very complex shapes. But what happened in this case is that sometime, because of the type of finishing or recognition that you need, you want to have the layers to be aligned exactly with the naked edges of your geometry with the opening. So this is usually not something that you can control directly because what you get normally is what you see on the left. You get just the lines that at some point arrive at the edge and sometimes they are just trimmed. So we had to introduce a way to control how you can align the layers to the naked edges in, this, in those parts. And you can control how much you want to uh, move the transition from the top towards uh, the geometry. How does it work? Also that one is not that complicated. You have normally a geometry, let's say this particular node with some naked edges, you normally generate the slicing from the bottom. So you have the gradient, all the layers, and on the edge you have some uh, trimmed polylines. So what you do, you start from the geodesic field from the bottom, which is not always the bottom, but where you want to start to print. And then you process another one that starts from the naked edges. And you have those two gradients, and what you do, you combine them, and then you get a nice gradient that provides you a transition from the horizontal base towards all the naked edges. And uh, this works fine with this type of object, and uh, those two objects that normally would require different inputs in order to have the optimal uh, printing quality, in this case, they are just working fine because we recognize those features. And here you can see something a bit more extreme just to see how, uh, no matter how many holes and openings you have, you can still produce a slicing from the bottom to the top. Good luck printing that. Um, so what happened is that when you planarize, when you apply a correction along the naked edges, uh, you are messing up the ideally perfect uh, geodesic field that you have. So we realized that some clients, we, we were getting some uh, variable layer height that, I mean, it's just part of how it works, um, but we wanted to have a very specific control. Again, different material, different processes, they have different requirements. So sometimes they want to keep the average layer height, uh, or sometimes they want to maintain a minimum layer height. So we have to understand exactly how we want to distribute those curves in order to ensure that the layer height variation is within the parameter that we need for printing optimally. And uh, from that we derived 
a very specific and simplified application which is called base mode, which basically just works every time that you have two naked edges, it creates the slicing from one to the other. So this automatically works, of course, with different geometries. It uh, doesn't matter the meshes, doesn't matter the parameters, doesn't matter if they are planar or non-planar, it provides you the layers that you need to print them. And without that, with all the slicing method that we had before, we had every time to specify different input to provide the perfect slicing for them. This is a video in collaboration with Generative Machine where we were printing using geodesic a lot of small tests. Just simple sphere, but still you don't have the gaps and you have a perfectly closed sphere. Or for example, yeah, just a, a very regular vase. Okay, nothing special about this. It's just horizontal because the shape is horizontal, but here then you have a, an inclined top, so you, it automatically detect that and orient the layer in order to reach exactly the end of the object. Or if you have more axes like here, then you can go crazy and do something non-planar and print a geometry that would definitely require some support, but you can avoid them because you can just print exactly following the shape. You may not see a big advantage in a small object like this, but imagine a big object where the support are money. Okay, so all this was about how to handle the surface of the object, but now we are working on uh, implementing a volumetric approach of that. So you normally you have the surface and you produce ISO curves. If you just process the volume, you can produce ISO surfaces. And with them, you can perform a complete slicing with multiple walls in field of the geometry. So here, if you see uh, the bunny, what happened is that uh, uh, for most of the layers at the base, they are kind of horizontal. They are just adapting a little bit. But then you see that they start uh, bending when they need more support to provide the perfect uh, uh, sequence of layers until you see the ears and the layers are oriented according to the shape that you had there. Uh, a branching shape, similar behavior. The layers are automatically aligned and they follow nicely the shape and they provide uh, all the internal infill, 100% density and whatever. Or you have maybe more complex shapes like this. And uh, again, all the layers are oriented and they produce those uh, non-planar infill that provide the optimal deposition for this object. Um, so now, yes, we have probably don't have yet the one-click slice. Uh, but as you can see, uh, you can also tune the planarization of the layers. So you can move from something extremely non-planar towards just a sequence of planes along the object. So with that, we hope that we like, may make a small step toward uh, a single slicing mode to rule them all. Uh, thank you. To learn more about the CDFAM Computational Design Symposium series, to see the archives of previous presentations, and to learn about future events, visit cdfam.com. Thank you.